a great question, and that's a question that, that I think most hoteliers uh, are asking themselves, certainly the hoteliers that are in the electrical sector. Uh, I think the answer to that will be very much depending upon what guests in the future are looking for when they go into the hotel. So I think that the time when luxury restaurants were found in luxury hotels is, I won't say coming to an end, but I think there's a real question of our surrounding to what degree that's going to continue. For the simple reason that I think today's guests don't necessarily want to go into a hotel because of a certain restaurant is found. They want to go in for other things. They want to go in for the rooms, for the comfort, for the spa, the gym, for a variety of the location. So I think there's a lot of different things that go into guest decision making about where they want to stay. And I think the restaurant decision is something that is going to be lower on the totem pole, as they say. However, I think there will still be, for certain hotels in certain cities, the need to have a fine dining experience. Because one slice of that clientele is still going to ask for that, but probably a smaller number than in the past. Mm -hmm. I think that will be on two different levels. One will be in the back of the house. In other words, what's going on in the kitchen. That is going to continue to be very important, I think, especially in two areas. First is reducing spoilage. We have a whole new generation of uh, I mean, machines, uh, uh, I mean, apparatus that are able to, using, using artificial intelligence and machine learning, help chefs reduce the amount of spoilage and wastage they have when they're operating their uh, uh, kitchens. Uh, whether it's recording, visually recording the wastage and weighing it and telling them that they've, you know, they're buying too much fish and not enough meat or things like that. I've seen some amazing new developments. So their ability to reduce wastage is very important. The other thing in the back of the house is the ability to reduce manpower and labor. A lot of what goes on in a kitchen, and having been there, I can tell you from experience, are repetitive, mindless operations. So I think that the ability to produce technology to reduce wastage and to reduce unnecessary manpower is going to be huge. The second question is how technology is going to affect the front of the house, and that's the guest engagement. And that's going to come down to a generational thing. I think for people of my generation who didn't grow up with all the Instagrams and who grew up in the digital world, that's not something that I'm interested in. Okay, And I think I can, not necessarily for my generation, but I think that's something that's important. For the younger generation, the people of your generation, that's much different. Um, I mean, I have a, we have a 12-year-old son. I mean, he'll probably be, he, he'll expect to be able to order everything uh, online or using, uh, you know, voice recognition uh, uh, into his iPhone to have orders placed. So I think it's, um, there's no question that will continue to develop in terms of guest relationship. You know, the arrival of Instagram is huge. Uh, I remember in, in years ago, chefs would used to forbid people from taking pictures of their food. Now they can't do that. So I think that as technology, as social media, as this whole digital revolution continues to sweep over the, the hospitality industry, um, the ability to adapt uh, technology uh, to both back of the house and the front of the house is going to be on the forefront uh, for a lot of restaurants. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that can be uh, a double-edged sword. It's something that I think needs to be treated very carefully because there's no question that using a celebrity chef, a chef that has a big profile, a big social media profile, a big following, and is very well known, obviously in the beginning will get clients into the restaurant, get revenue, get traffic. There's no question about that. The problem is that if that celebrity chef is not in the restaurant very often or maybe comes in two or three times a year or whatever, the ability to deliver the guest experience, the food experience, the culinary experience to the guests based upon that chef's reputation is trickier. So uh, in my experience, celebrity chefs that are able to deliver consistent experiences even if they're not there, in other words, their teams are able to do that for them, that's great. However, chefs that aren't quite able to do that for a variety of reasons, they will suffer and they can eventually have take a hit to their reputation. I think that's something that's going to be of great interest to a lot of hoteliers because uh, their ability to generate revenue per square foot is limited in the rooms. 
but I think for the restaurants, there's a lot more opportunity. But their ability to do that is their ability, to, based upon their ability to bring outside guests into the restaurants. Um, because when you're in the off season, when you're in a slow period, uh, if you have a low occupancy in your hotel, if you only use 80% or 90% of your clients are the hotel guests, you're going to suffer. And if you have a thriving restaurant that's able to have 30, 40, 50% of the guests that are coming from the local community or from other, and you'll be able to steal guests from other hotels, that will give you a basis on which you can make a much higher revenue stream even when your hotel occupancy is low.